played a lot of DOS games in the 90s, then you probably came across Hugo's House of Horrors at one point or another. It was a simple yet enjoyable game where you ventured into a haunted house to rescue your missing girlfriend Penelope. The entire experience was a pastiche of horror cliches, and despite its basic graphics, it was kind of fun to play. Single-handedly, it was developed by a guy named David Gray, who also eventually created two sequels, Hugo 2 Who Done It, and Hugo 3 The Jungle of Doom. These both had near identical gameplay and were released shortly after one another. Overall, these were fun, cheap little games that I'm sure most older gamers will fondly remember. So let's jump forward to 1992. Id Software's Wolfenstein 3D has just come out and given birth to the genre of first-person shooters. A mere 12 months or so later and it's followed up by Doom, inspiring numerous other developers to make their own shooters, including good old David Gray himself. In 1994, he creates Nightmare 3D, an FPS-styled remake of sorts to Hugo's House of Horrors, where once again you're put in Hugo's shoes and set off to rescue Penelope from the clutches of a mad scientist. Much like Hugo's House of Horrors, Nightmare 3D features every single horror stereotype in the book, from mummies, werewolves, mad scientists, bats through to witches and ghosts. I even came across a skeleton in a closet at one point. Even the main villain's name, Dr. Hammerstein, is both a reference to the Hammer horror films of the 60s and 70s, as well as being an amalgamation of the fictitious Dr. Frankenstein from Mary Shelley's literary classic. You really get the impression overall that David Gray had a lot of fun making this game, and his inspirations and influences are blatantly obvious. During Hugo's quest, he can use up to four weapons, involving a plasma pistol, magic wand, silver bullet pistol, and an updated rapid fire version of the original plasma gun. Now the concept here is that the silver bullets work better against undead enemies like mummies and werewolves, though I found the plasma gun works fine for pretty much every single enemy and is the general go-to gun most of the time. The main environments explored in the first episode are primarily the haunted house as well as the graveyards and various crypts contained within the grounds of the house itself. And the general atmosphere of the game is quite comical and enjoyable, however Nightmare 3D does have its fair share of problems. One of the most noticeable faults is the stupidity of the enemies, but what they lack in pathfinding abilities, they make up for in deadliness. Even on the default difficulty, enemies can deal massive damage to Hugo. The witches are the worst offenders of the lot, sometimes even taking up to 50 health off in a single hit. The main issue with this is that when enemies attack you, they don't actually fire off any visible projectiles, meaning that it's practically impossible to avoid taking damage unless you cheat out the AI, and wait for them around corners, and even then, they often get off a lucky hit. How do I put this eloquently? Let me see. Yeah, it sucks. It's just bad programming more than anything else, and it really affects the game's shooting in a very negative way, as does the general layout of the levels themselves. In most FPS games of the 90s, you often explored the environment, often to find a set of keys to progress through the level. Nightmare 3D continues this trend, but takes it one step further, putting some of the keys in downright sadistic locations. In the later levels, they're hidden behind multiple secret walls. Some of these walls are destructible and require being shot at to be revealed, though there is almost no indication or assistance as to what walls you actually have to shoot. It is pure maze hunting in every sense of the word, and it's really not that fun at all. There's no pattern or sense to any of the layouts either, it literally seems like random hallways and paths that have no point or structure. There is a map system, though you need to collect power-ups to keep it working, and if these power-ups run out, then you're in a pretty bad spot. It really is brutally difficult, and it almost seems like David Gray has tried to make the levels as frustrating as possible. The game's real saving grace is the writing and content, which is undeniably original. The first episode ends with Hugo trapped in some sort of alternate dimension, leaving it on a really fantastic cliffhanger, but ultimately the enjoyment factor is all let down by some really bad design. For the longest time, I only ever had a shareware copy of this game, which meant I never truly got to experience a complete Nightmare 3D game. During the period when I was preparing this review, I actually found a copy of the game on David's still existing website. Somewhere deep inside of me, I actually thought the ensuing chapters might be a little bit better than the first. So what did I do? Yeah, I bought it. And is the last two chapters any better? No, it's more of the same. Even worse is that it seems like the version I bought has updated some of the graphics for the textures and enemy models, yet they've strangely left the majority of things unchanged, which just makes the game look like it has a mishmash of art styles. But look, at the end of the day, I've got nothing but respect for David Gray. I mean, Hugo's House of Horrors is one of those games that holds a very nostalgic place in my heart, reminding me of those long gone Saturday nights as a child spent huddled in front of my dad's 286. In a way, David Gray was one of the first indie developers of the late 80s, early 90s. 
He made the types of games he wanted, how he wanted. And you've got to respect the guy for that. But this independence has come at the expense of the gameplay, especially when considering Nightmare 3D. And overall, I can't really recommend it to anyone, as it's largely just a confusing, frustrating maze hunt which loses its appeal very early on. If you really want to play an old pixelated FPS, then maybe something like Wolfenstein 3D or Catacombs is a better option. As it is, Nightmare 3D is just more likely to frustrate than anything else.